This is the first video in a two-part series on how to use the built-in gyro of your Spike Prime robot to help you make more accurate and consistent turns. The program to use the gyro to control turns with the Spike Prime robot isn't difficult, but it may require you to use some new command blocks you aren't familiar with, and there are a couple of tricks you have to watch out for. For this program, I have already set up my movement motors and movement speed under when program starts. I have also dragged out a when left button pressed event to create a program to show you some gyro controlled turns. The hub is able to measure yaw, or how far it has swung left or right in a 360 degree circle. When the program starts, the direction the hub is facing is zero degrees. When the hub shifts to the right, the yaw value will go up. As the hub shifts to the left, the yaw value will go down. All the values to the right of zero are positive, and all the values to the left of zero are negative. This means that for right turns, the yaw value will always go up, and for left turns, the yaw value will always go down. This will require you to use a different command stack for each type of turn, one stack for right turns and one stack for left turns. And right now, I'm gonna show you how to make each of those stacks. And I'm gonna start by dragging out a pair of repeat until control blocks. And I'm gonna right click on this one and add a comment and I'm going to type in right turn and I'm going to right click on this one and I'm going to add a comment and call this one left turn. And I can resize these comments so that they're a little smaller and now I have a stack set up for each type of turn. The next thing I have to do is put an equation inside this hexagon. So I'm going to go down to operators and we need to use greater than and less than equations. Since the right turn, the value always goes up, you're going to need to use a greater than equation when your robot is making a right turn. And for the left turn, since the value is always going down, you're going to need to use a less than equation for your left turn. And this is the primary difference between the two programs is one is making a right turn and using a greater than equation, the other is making a left turn and using a less than equation. I need to complete the equation by going to my sensors and using one of these pitch angle pills and placing it inside the equation. But remember, when the robot turns, it is not measuring pitch, it's measuring yaw, so you have to click on the pull down menu and select yaw. The next thing that needs to go inside this stack is the turn itself. And I prefer to use the turns in the more movements. So I'm gonna to come to more movement and I prefer to use either the moving at 50-50 speed or 50-50 power. And it really doesn't matter which one you use, they both work equally well. Now remember, I've always told you that when you are using sensors to control your robot, you need to slow it down to give the robot a chance to react to the sensor values. And so I'm gonna slow everything down to 30%. So now, if I wanna make a right turn, I can set the angle to the desired angle. For example, I want to make a 90 degree turn to the right. And then in order for the robot to swing to the right, one wheel should be moving forwards, one wheel should be moving backwards. And remember, the robot will always turn towards the wheel moving backwards. So if I want the robot to turn to the right, I need this wheel moving backwards. Now on this left turn, remember, since the robot is turning to the left and the values are going negative, instead of a 90 degree turn, I need to actually set the value to negative 90 degrees. And then again, one of these wheels needs to be moving backwards. And since the robot's going to turn to the left, it is the left wheel that needs to move backwards. So I'll set the left wheel at negative 30. The last part of these stacks is you need something outside the end of the stack, because if there's nothing for the robot to do once it's hit this exit command, then the robot won't run the stack. So I'm going to come back to my initial movements and just place a stop moving on the bottom of each stack. 
And this is all there is to your initial turns. And so I'm gonna now take my left turn and I'm gonna place it over here on the side underneath my right turn and I'm gonna leave them there as I write the program. Because anytime I want to use one of these turns, rather than having to redo all of this, I can right click on this box and duplicate the whole thing and bring a right turn into my program. So let's start writing a program where the robot's going to move and use some of these turns. So the first thing that needs to happen when you're gonna be using the sensor is to reset the yaw angle to zero so that the robot will know that the direction it's facing when you hit go is zero. Anytime I reset a sensor, I always want to go into control and give the robot a short wait time to give it a chance to reset that sensor before it takes off. So a half a second wait to reset the yaw angle is a smart thing to add. The next thing I'm going to do is now start having the robot move. And I'm going to start by going to movements and I'm just going to drag in a move for so many centimeters and I'm going to set this to 20 centimeters, which is only about eight inches. So the robot's going to go straight for a little bit, and then I'm going to bring in a left turn by right-clicking here, hitting duplicate, and bringing in a left turn. Now remember, when the robot is turning, he's always going to overshoot that value a little bit. So if I really want it to stop at negative 90, I need to put in a smaller value like negative 85 or 84. And so I'll just add negative 85 for now by clicking inside the circle there and adding negative 85 instead. So I can change the value every time I want to make a turn. And now the robot is going to swing to negative 85 and exit and hopefully it'll stop closer to negative 90. So now the robot is turned and I'm going to have it move straight again for another 20 centimeters. And this time I want the robot to turn right. So I'm going to left click on here, hit duplicate, bring in my right turn, and again, rather than having the robot go all the way to 90, I just want the robot to go back to the direction it was facing when it started, which would be zero. But instead of going to zero, remember it's gonna overshoot that value. And since it's going from negative 90 back to zero, counting down, I want it to go to maybe about negative five, and then it'll exit and hopefully stop a lot closer to zero before I have it start moving straight again. So I'm gonna bring in one more move straight command for another, 20 centimeters and then let's bring in one more right turn and again I'm gonna have the robot stop at 90 but instead of stopping at 90 I'm going to have it stop at 85 so it'll overshoot and stop at 90. So now let's go ahead and see how this program works. I am sure you can see that if you take the time in the beginning to set up your left and right turns, it makes the writing of your program go much quicker later on because you can just copy the turns in and set the values. In part two, I'll show you how to clean up this program using variables and my blocks.